interesting so for the first part of the name of the workshop uh, but I will touch a little bit the matrix integrals uh, and try to inscribe them into a general scheme of integrability uh, which I would start from a famous equation formulating a famous equation which is Hirota bilinear equation and uh, it has many forms Hirota uh, equations are a hierarchy of uh, district of uh, different uh, partial differential equations but uh, there are all there is a form which I would prefer for this talk uh, this is for a function of a variable u, simply a function of one variable uh, t, uh, labeled by two integers, a and s. That's my convention. Uh, and it satisfies the following equation, the Hirota equation. So t a s u plus i over 2 minus u minus i over 2 is equal t a s uh, plus 1. I skip here uh, everything of you, okay, T A S minus 1 plus T A plus 1 S, T A minus 1 S. So we have here essentially discrete equation in all three variables, although formally it looks like a, it looks like a continuous variables, we all variable we always shifted. I could write here, here 1 in some normalization, but uh, uh, I wrote I over 2 because I will apply it for some physical case. Uh, so this equation can be called a master equation of integrability because you meet it everywhere uh, in quantum or classical integrable problems. And mm, I would just give you a short list. First, first of all, you have uh, so integrability. classical or quantum. So this list would include uh, partial differential equations like uh, uh, KDV, uh, KP, etc. Then matrix integrals. Uh, also uh, 2D statistical mechanical models such as eight vertex model uh, and then uh, quantum spin chains one plus one dimensional spin chains such as Heisenberg model etc uh, and also, it's uh, probably uh, in inc increasing sophistication. Uh, the next model would be uh, two-dimensional quantum field theories uh, and sigma models, such as, uh, for example, uh, uh, Saint Gordon or there are many sigma models, uh, uh, for example, principal chiral field, I will briefly speak about it. Principal chiral field. Um, and um, let me give some examples. I will not speak about partial differential equations. It's a subject which probably many of you know from various well, points of view. Yes. Integers, yes. Simply if any integer, negative, and positive, and S as well. And, uh, and U is, and U is uh, in principle also integer because you always shift it by I. You see, all the shifts okay. go by I. Yeah. But yeah, here it's simply of you. Yeah. I, I 
keep it without of too many so if I take log details. The right hand side, that looks like a little frosting. Uh, if you drop any of these terms, yes. two other look like disk isoplasia. Yes. That's true. Okay, that's but if you have all three of them, it's a nonlinear equation. But integrable, of course. And we'll discuss why. So the first example will be from the matrix models, uh, so-called two matrix model uh, uh, can be defined in the following way too. Um, it's, I simply define TAS, which will satisfy this equation as a function of U. Um, uh, it's a double integral over Hermitian matrices d a square a by a Hermitian matrices uh, so the first one is a the second y one also a by a is b and then the action is e to the trace uh, two potentials take w of a uh, plus d of b plus a very important mixing term, AB. So, and we add a little bit of more to the potentials. Namely, we add determinant of A to the power U plus S plus A over two, and determinant of B um, U minus S plus A um, over 2 as well. So simply, you can exponentiate it. It will be simply some logarithmic uh, additions to general potential. Not, not a big deal, but you introduce letters. So if you, maybe I should have started from this normalization of the spectral, of, of this parameter U, that's plus 1 minus 1. So if you plug it into this equation, it will satisfy this equation. And the proof goes through going to eigenvalues, uh, representing this it as a determinant. Ah, it's simply a Hermitian measure, the Hermitian measure uh, over a, uh, simply a squared degrees of freedom. I, somehow we, in the old times, we marked it, this measure in this way, but it's a linear measure, simply over all matrix elements. So drop what? I, I, have to, I have to keep the determinant. No, simply uh, I want to have some dependence on particular variable, and you have to introduce it this way. The, uh, otherwise, it's the same. I mean, I, it wouldn't be an equation because you don't have the parameter s and u, the parameters s and u. But it's enough gener uh, general enough to solve any matrix model in principle with appropriate boundary conditions. I, uh, b because you simply, uh, you pose the problem in the following way. You have a lattice, uh, say A, S, so you have this lattice going to infinity and then you put by definition so uh, each each point here corresponds to TAS so to this variable so you put T equal to 1 everywhere here on the first row at A equals 0 and at A equals 1 it's a simple integral yes it's not a matrix anymore since A is a variable it's 1 so you solve the following problem. You know two rows here, uh, and you want to solve the second order differ uh, difference, finite difference equation. And of course, you, we know the solution. Let me write it here. T A S is equal to, uh, to the determinant uh, K J going from one to A and T 1s, the t's which are given here, this is this t, and here you simply have u plus k plus, 
plus k plus j as an argument. So it's uh, a determinant, mm, and it's well known that this Hirota equation satisfies the determinant with particular boundary conditions. So here already you see whether, whether it's useful or not for you, you see that you integrated out this equation and uh, it's a good way to the solution of the problem. Um, Uh, here it's uh, a well posed, how it's called, uh, Dirichlet problem. Hmm? Oh, the size is A, but it's a variable here. Uh, actually, uh, it's quite possible, I think. At least, uh, I remember I uh, played around with some particular examples of this equation for solving these equations, and you can indeed do some interesting things. You can, for example, in the large n limit, in the large a limit, uh, it, it might be a useful representation. Uh, but. It's the first row, which is okay. a equals one, yes? Okay. It's uh, a equals one here, okay. it's zero, zero. So it's simple inter double integral. Suppose you calculated it. Then you use it as a boundary condition and you can restore oh, so the whole solution. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, the simplest possible uh, application here. Now let's go yeah. to. Uh, here it simply drop jumps over integers. Since, uh, since you know here the one. Uh, th the integral for a equals one, you know it as a function of any continuous u, even continuous s. But you you know how to continue it here. So you know you to any num. Yes, yes. Okay. Now uh, the next problem is the calculation of characters. Uh, I think Hirota, there are so many different equations. So, uh, so the standard ones uh, uh, generically formulated by Jim Bonny, Wasato uh, are in canonical form. You have uh, in terms of times, in terms of variables which enter, yeah. for example, here V and W. And or you can even exponentiate this, it, and then it will be something like T0 here. Uh, so. And in fact, it's a TODA. Uh, it, it, it satisfies TODA hierarchy equations. Uh, but I guess TODA uh, uh, equations were sort of guessed by Hirota already. I'm not sure uh, in, in this history. But I think TODA wrote something which used times. But uh, one with another, uh, I mean, uh, this canonical form, this, this one is related by so-called MIVA transformation by MIVA variables. So in fact, you have to have tri a triple of variables here. It's a f u, or you you can have three different times, and uh, you uh, you can uh, in this way you can formulate a quite generic equation, Hirota equation. So it's one of incarnations of Hirota by linear equation. Now, the next mm, interesting application is characters, and we will speak already about. Uh, the group GLK slash M um, about a supergroup in a, in a moment. Um, so let's define the quantity T A S uh, in as a function of a matrix G which belongs to uh, GL, actually, G, the group GLK slash M. Uh, let's define it as a matrix integral. It will be actually the unitary integral DH, the R measure over the, over the group UA. So 
is also a by a integral divided by determinant h to f plus one. And here I I put super determinant. Of course, uh, everything can be also done for simple bosonic group. It's a boson bosonic group, it's like JLK, it's simply a particular case of this one. But here you write super determinant of one minus h times direct product is g minus one. And this is in fact a character of representation, mm, of rectangular representation with young tableau labeled by A and S. So in young tableaus, usually S is symmetric direction, so it's, uh, and A is anti-symmetric direction. Uh, that's why we always use A and S. They're really, this let these labels are very much group theoretical, so it's better to label it that. And this is the character uh, as a function of group element G. Uh, then using a quite a simple property. Yeah, I can, I can, I mean, some people are not familiar with the super determinant, but, but for that purpose. Very soon I, I, I will I explain it. Drop, I can just drop the, the M, can I? And, and S, you can drop S, you mean. Yeah, of course, it. then it will be standard. But I will just in a second define what is the character, super character in a bit more detail, and it will be some, <laughs> some fun. Um, uh, now, actually, what is the equation this TAS satisfies? Uh, I'm sorry, G here should be put in some, it's not the same as U, it's simply a parameter here. So here you have only the letters A and S. So in fact, what will happen, uh, you will have let me write it here, simplified Pirotta equation. T A S squared equals T A plus one, uh, A S plus one. The rest is the same. T A S minus one plus T A plus one S T A minus one S. So it looks like a one matrix integral, yes? More than that, the similarities uh, uh, will be complete if you say forget about S. If you put it like, uh, e to the log dead, li like uh, e to the trace log, and expand with respect to this factor. The powers trace g to the n will be times, like couplings in the uh, one matrix potential. So in fact, and this is a little uh, logarithmic uh, addition to the potential. So it's a actually, but what is important, it's a unitary matrix here. And then, of course, we know that the characters, the characters of such representations should be zero outside the following, uh, I write here A and S. Uh, I have this lattice. And and we know that if we work with the group. If, for example, we have, uh, if G is, again, without S, G belongs to uh, GLN, or for example, SUN is a particular example, or UN, then of course all the characters will be confined be between well, in this half step, so that the representation, say, this representation, which corresponds to this young tableau, will be non-zero, but here t will be zero everywhere for a and s outside this step. Yes, because simply you cannot have young tableaus bigger than the rank of the group, and also s should be positive for u n at least. So you got a particular boundary condition here. Uh, you solve this equation with this particular boundary condition on A and S. You solve it, you get this as an answer, uh, as the answer. Uh, parameterized by. What, what? It's similar, of course, of course. This is a, a bit more general, but uh, in principle, all these are well-known examples. And, and Things, right? I mean, 
have you simply uh, doesn't exist here. But yes, yes. For the moment, I speak about characters. Now only two variables are left here. Um, but I will show how you could appear if we go to the next case, to the to actually to the quantum spin chains. Um, but uh, before, I would like to say a couple of words about supersymmetry, maybe here, about supersymmetric case. Um, so one way to generate characters. Is this a supersymmetric case and, and a non-supersymmetric Yes, that's the uh, general oh, formula. Oh. Although H, H is simply U UA, yeah, not super integral. Uh, but it's true for super characters as well. Uh, now, suppose we uh, we take we know that the element G of the supergroup is parameterized by eigenvalues, so it's enough to have this uh, um, Y subgroup to to define the character. And here we denote it like for G L K M like X one etc. X K and there are two types of eigenvalues. There is a grading uh, for the supergroup, and then y1, etc., ym. So that this the supermatrix, this is now supermatrix, has uh, eigenvalues in two gradings. Sometimes we call it bosonic and fermionic, but it's an abuse of uh, terminology because they are on equal footing here. Now, let's introduce uh, generating function as a function of parameter z, uh, generating function of symmetric character. W is a function of z and also of the group element. And it's super determinant of 1 minus z times g to the power minus 1. For the usual determinant, you certainly know this formula. Uh, if you expand in Z, you generate the characters of symmetric representations, like this young tableau, a particular case of our characters, of our rectangular representations. And um, now, if you write it in terms of eigenvalues, super determinant is the ratio of two determinants, so that we can write it as product M from one to m 1 minus z y m over product k from 1 to z k 1 minus z x k simply such ratio um, and you can expand it into you can expand it with respect to the powers of s, uh, z, s, and uh, z to the s. The coefficient in front of z to the s will be t one s. And um, if you want to compute, for example, the character of arbitrary representation, including this one. Uh, defined on, highest w on a set of highest weight lambda, the, the length of the rows in the Young tableau, it will be simply uh, determinant uh, i and j from one to, to uh, let me limit myself by AS representations, rectangular ones. Um, so it will be chi uh, one and okay, T one S and S should be written as S minus I plus J. It's a similar formula what we had in two matrix models. Uh, and it's called Jacobi Trudy, uh, Gambelli Jacobi Trudy formula for character. Oh, I wanted to write T. So you can restore the character TAS for rectangular tab tab uh, young tableau from the symmetric character 
T1s by this determinant. But the question now is, <laughs> um, you expand in Z. Do you expand in small powers of Z, or maybe you can expand in one over Z? It's easy to expand around infinity or around zero. Uh, in principle, it gives the series. In one case, of course, it will be from zero to infinity. But uh, generically, you can expand some terms around zero, some terms around infinity, some uh, monomials around zero, another around infinity. Uh, and in general, you have this sum from minus infinity to infinity. And this is a very simple way to, um, to generate uh, uh, also non-compact representations. Not only if, if you expand around zero, everything here, here and there, especially here, of course, in the denominator, it is, then you'll get only positive powers of S. If you expand, for example, a couple of terms around uh, zero, another other terms around infinity, you'll get infinite sum, and it corresponds to infinite dimensional representations. And um, if you use, for example, um, if you use the compact case, you expand around zero, um, you will find that all the space, uh, so all the representations live within such a hook. So we have here K, here we have M. And so all these representations should live in, the, in this so-called fat hook in, in the representation literature. Uh, and this is already a supergroup, yes? Uh, GL K slash M, compact highest weight is red. But uh, this is when you expand around zero here. Now you can expand around, uh, you, you generate uh, again by this formula everything. Now you, uh, Jacobi Trudy formula. Now you can expand, as I said, for example, you can expand, uh, you can take uh, the following non-compact uh, group or representations of non-compact group Let's take the example two comma two slash four, which will be important maybe at the end of my lecture. Um, then it's easy to show that This is how the picture looks like. All the represent, oh, the, it's too much here. So you see, this four corresponds to, to, to this uh, thing, and two and two here. So I claim that if you expand, there are k equals to four. If you expand two brackets around zero and two around infinity, you get this infinite sum. You plug it in here, you solve Hirota equation without, I mean, this simplified Hirota equation, which I wrote here, you solve in this ASI. It's again A and S. You solve in the, on this lattice. Everywhere here, T is zero. Here, here, and here. And this is the way how you should calculate the super characters of non-compact highest weight representations. Uh, so it's... Yes, yes. It's sort of uh, when you take the quadratic form, when you yeah. take quadratic form, it has two pluses and two minuses yeah. here. So, so uh, I don't know so much about the theory of non compact group representations. Mm -hmm. There are, yes, there are. 
many more, th there are these principal series, yeah. etc. but this one is highest weight. There is no lowest weight because we have here uh, infinite dimensional representations. All highest weight, yes. All highest weight, All highest weight can be characterized. Uh, we somehow discovered it because we studied the particular case of uh, AGS CFT, which you heard about a few weeks ago. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, maybe it was also noticed in mathematical literature that that's how hmm? yeah, we constructed actually all these characters in yeah, one so paper. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You mix uh, expansion around, s take two of these yeah. uh, brackets, you expand around zero, two other around infinity. Yeah. You put everything together, you get this series, of course, and then. Yes, more or less. Oh, that they are characterized by young tableaus already, which are, all of them are confined here, I mean, including the rectangular one, which we studied, like this, for example. So each point is a representation. I, I also knew almost zero, but now I know something, but uh, not much more than that. <laughs> we simply used it in our for our problems, but that's a nice picture in terms of representations. Now. Um, For this supergroup, for the group, uh, actually. If I, don't have, if I don't have a superstructure. You can still do it. Or yes, it yes. By the way, it's uh, it's for example the same picture for SL two, which is the same as S U. Or U one, comma say S U one one. It's this picture. So you have instead of having. Uh, like here, just two rows. You have one row in each direction and sort of a defect here in this point. So you, you split it by one and one, six, two, and it solves the Sirota equation. I don't know what is the place of uh, principal series here. Maybe also one can find something like that, but certainly it's true for uh, highest weight. I'm not sure it's so well uh, known. It's, uh, for me, it's this picture, yes, the connection to Hirota of characters. We discovered it by working on this particular group, but of course generalized very easily. Uh, but then we noticed a couple of papers, which I, I don't know, remember, I don't remember the names. I can look at maybe somewhere there. There are the names. Ah, here it is. Cheng, Lam, Zheng, and Kwon papers, but uh, they don't have these nice pictures, and I'm not sure they have Hirota, yeah, mentioned yeah, Hirota, but they, they are yeah. more or less in this way, they are constructing the representations. We only learned it about uh, later, asking mathematicians around. Yeah, so, but now the next step, uh, I wanted, so characters are sort of a classical case. Now I want to quantize characters. And one way to quantize it, which we proposed one once with Pedro Vira, uh, is to, and to introduce spin chains, quantum spin chains, is the following. Let's uh, start from a character. So for us, the character I would denote it this way. I should have denoted this way. Uh, or even a general representation lambda, P of lambda. Uh, it's a trace in the representation lambda of some group element G, yes? Now <coughs> let's uh, introduce what we call co-derivative. In the following way. We take, uh, so it's mat a matrix 
differentiation already uh, you are well familiar with matrix integration now matrix dif differentiation which is slightly non-trivial namely here we introduce z which is something like uh, left um, uh, so any function of g can be differentiated and uh, it's essentially uh, g d d g of let's call d prime uh, you differentiate f you shift from the group from the left and then put g prime to to one to unity yes so it's a left differentiation left vector field one can say we call it for derivative uh, for example with, with open indices I mean it's a differentiation with respect to a matrix so you can open indices like i1 j1 for this derivative differentiating for example g which is i2 j2 just a group element here with open uh, it's in a joint for example uh, then the result is actually uh, the f we can easily calculate it and the result is um, delta i1 j2 times g uh, i2 j1 you see first of all g we keep g but uh, these two indices are interchanged we can more formally write it as permutation of states one and two of unity of unity in the first space this one and g in the second space simply here i denote the spaces and you have a permutation operator here now if you now apply this uh, if you apply d let's apply u plus let's apply u plus d to a character in some representation lambda suppose it's u1 then you can apply another time u2 plus d etc you can apply ul plus d simply by this chain rule let's call this quantity t <laughs> now let me limit myself by representation a s again rectangular representation let's call it t a s um, I should uh, have introduced here uh, overall more I mean you can substitute each u j by u u plus u j simply I want the overall shift from s to pick up from here the rest is among with the variables there but I only pick this shift then this guy first of all it satisfies this equation which is already much more difficult to prove we spent we actually uh, proved it in this paper with Pedro Vera and this is already quite a sophisticated bi business nothing to compare uh, with characters but in some sense it's a very simple generalization of characters Um, uj's are arbitrary and u is simply overall shift which I take as a variable uj's are so it doesn't matter what your uj's are it's still satisfied yes 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 and it doesn't matter which representation it is of, uh, I mean a and s are arbitrary this is a quantum spin chain more than that it's precisely the transfer matrix of quantum spin, uh, Heisenberg quantum spin chain and for example if you calculate if you calculate um, logarithmic derivative of this t function for all for uh, uh, over u and you take one one uh, uh, simply fundamental representation 
all uj's put to zero, put, I mean, all uj's to zero and u also to zero. And let's also at the end put also the element g here, which is called twist usually. It's a twisted spin chain, but let's put twist to zero to simplify things. Then it appears to be the quantum Hamilton Hamiltonian of Heisenberg spin chain, simply the sum of perturbations, uh, of, of permutations. It's m, m plus one. It's isotropic, but uh, yes, it's the isotropic case. By the way, to the generalization is to quantum groups, to this uh, XSZ model um, looks quite difficult. Uh, like we don't know how to use the same trick, but here it works very nice, actually, and helps actually to prove many theorems. So you see, already permutation appears here of two neighboring, uh, of, of two nearest neighbors. So essentially, when you differentiate, put to zero, you get precisely the Heisenberg spin chain for GL, K slash M, even super case. Uh, no, uh, ah, here it's the simplest one. So essentially, you denote it in this way. You put. So here you have auxiliary space. Auxiliary space is this one, one one. So if you introduce G, it's taken in. Uh, it's like here you have one box flying. Uh, in auxiliary space, it's a representation. Uh, vector rep uh, fundamental representation. These ones are also to also vector representations in this by the differentiation. You open, each time you differentiate, you open a couple of indices. So these are the spaces. One, two, three. So all this, uh, this aggregate is a matrix in quantum space. Ingoing indices, outgoing indices. All these T's commute among each other so that this equation finally, I should restore it. This equation, here you really write I over two, it becomes really an equation to eigen for eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian or this transformative. So it's a nice step from characters to, uh, and to spin chains. So in some sense, transformatives of spin chains are quantized characters here. So can you, so uh, that, you said that's not a very easy, it doesn't look like an easy way to set up, but what, how do you? Ah, that's not, now with all these structures, you, you have to, for example, they don't really commute, but they commute due to, I mean, they commute through some intertwining R matrix, uh, so due to so young, so young Baxter equations, so in fact, Yeah, you, you have to go through much much more complica complicated. I, we claim this is the way to to okay. rederive from scratch everything. Um, to once you prove this, bit and thus equations are quite an easy thing to I think to derive. For example, one condition is suppose all of them are polynomials. How can it be? And then you will arrive to uh, be on those equations. I, I will, if I manage, I will demonstrate it at some point. Uh, okay, and uh, of course, if it's a super spin chain, you will end up with this boundary condition for this equation. Or this one is more complicated. It's a non-complex non case, which I don't consider, consider here. Okay. You can end up with, uh, b uh, with uh, with, uh, with no, with uh, beta equations, for example, or or young Baxter equations, which is actually uh, for the rest of talk, I will speak about Baxter functions. Now, um, how to now ah one more statement is that. For sigma models, which I also mentioned here, for example, let's consider 
the, uh, I mean, for, for sigma models, you also have quantities which satisfy this equation. Uh, for example, for principal chiral field, which I mentioned briefly. Uh, Yes, I simply define the Lagrangian here, the action. It's integral G. So it lets it be defined on the cylinder. It's a two-dimensional theory. Uh, here you have time, T, or say tau. Here you have space dimension sigma. So it's one plus one dimensional model. And you integrate G sigma from zero to L. The length is L here. And integral G tau, whatever it is from minus infinity to infinity. And then you have trace g minus one dg square, where g belongs to SUN. In fact, the symmetry is SUN times SUN because you can shift the by constant yeah. group shifts from left and from the right. Like here, for example, we shifted from the left, but we also could shift from the right. So this is the model. and. It happens so that for some particular quantities, which I don't want to to precise because it's already more complicated, but somewhat similar to the transfer matrices, should be similar. Uh, you still get this equation with very particular analytics. Already analytics is much more complicated. In you, you don't have analytics as simple as here, like you say that it's polynomials and that's it. Solve it in all possible polynomial functions. Here, you really know much less about functions. You know some asymptotics, you know some, some properties which is too long to precise, but you end up with this equation with some analyticity and asymptotic conditions in U, which allows you to continue analytically from integer values of u to the whole complex plane. Uh, but um, just to discuss the group theoretical aspect of Hirota equation for this uh, model, quantized already model, fully quantized, uh, uh, it appears to live on the following AS lattice. some sense the young the young tab there are these nodes which correspond to to singlets but singlets have life here in this model and then there are say here it's n for SUN uh, this goes from 0 to n uh, there is right young tableau for SUN uh, no not young Dinkin diagram these nodes correspond to Dinkin diagram. And here, left, for left symmetries. There are two wings, left and right. But they are smoothly uh, glued together by, uh, by this structure. So in fact, it's already a lot of knowledge. Then you know some asymptotics, but I don't want to stop for too long time on this model, which we also solved using for finite length of the space, which is important, which we, uh, we, we can compute the spectrum of spectrum energies. Of Spec yeah, we have the general equation. Out of here, we can deduce some nice equations for the spectrum of energies of finite size uh, sigma model. And uh, the method is very general. It's, of course, is not applicable only, he only here, but also for, for example, this KDS CSP case, which I have little chance to even to start with today. But now I wanted to speak a little bit about how to use integrability of this equation, solve it in terms of Ronskian's determinants, similar to what we had here of Q functions. Are there lax pairs or anything like that? Everything what you know about integrability can be met here in discrete version. And, um, and is the next blackboard, uh, and I will try to find some shortcut. 
to give you an idea. Uh, so I want to solve, for example, this equation as an example in this step of with M. How do I do it? Uh, my claim is that here you have infinite number of T's, but in fact, uh, you can solve it in terms of finite number of functions. Because if you, for example, give some functions here, then you solve the second order equation. And naively already you see that if you put the boundary here or some data, data here, then you can solve it in the rings and express through these few functions, uh, like 2n functions. Something like that, but it's more complicated. It's in no, principle, it's any, any, any two n functions. It will be specific two n functions, not just t functions yeah. here, mm -hmm. to make the equation nicer. So let me show you the solution. Mm. Uh, so first of all, I introduce one form of n functions, n q functions. where psi i with psi j anti conjugate Grassmann variable. So I introduce n functions qj as functions of this spectral parameter, and I introduce uh, one form by contracting it with psi's, with n psi anti commuting. Now I can also, let me now uh, introduce important notations to make things not too bulky. I will skip the argument u, but only denote the shifts of this argument because we always have shifts by i, uh, so, or by i or two. So this will be by definition q of u plus i over two n times, simply the shift n times uh, of the argument u. Sometimes I will write also q plus minus, which is by definition the shift u, the minimal possible shift, u plus minus i over two. So using this notation, we proceed by introducing a few more vectors. Uh, for example, we can introduce q one form with the shift minus l plus one then we can mo take one form with the shift minus L plus three, et cetera. So it jumps in, the shift jumps, jumps in two, which means I. And then Q, we end up with L minus one. And let's, so all these are our one forms. Are Simply shif shift it. Now let me multiply it. Mo one can put even wedge here, wedges. Because, but without wedges is also, it, it, it can also do. Um, and this is L form. We define in this way L form, just by definition. Um, already it smells like a Grassmannian. We are trying to build a Grassmannian on n vector qj and all, all on all possible shifts of this vector by i. Uh, now, if you expand, expand it in, uh, if you expand it in size, you will get something like determinants um, Q of minus one minus K plus two N and N from one to K. So over all this, ah, J M over all these j's, and the coefficients will be psi j1, et cetera, psi j l. So the coefficient in front of this uh, product of Grassmann variables can be called, usually it's called a new q function, q, j, q j1, et cetera, j l with L indices and um, 
the shifts are important here. They enter into determinant, of course. So for, for the simple case, for example, SU2, SU, or, uh, SU2, you have only two functions. One is going up to two. Then you can form the function. Of course, everything is anti-symmetric because they are Grassmannian. All this J1, et cetera, JL are different. Here. It's an anti-symmetric tensor. Uh, then you can uh, introduce Q12, which appears to be Q1 plus Q2 minus, minus Q1 minus Q2 plus. So it's just an example, you know, two, indi of two index function, the only one which you have here. By the way, uh, for the spin chains, for the SU2 Heisenberg spin chain, you can immediately get from here the, uh, 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 the beta equations. By one can motivate that this Q12 is u to the power L, where L is the length of the chain. Now, suppose I tell you that both Q1 and Q2 are polynomials. Then you immediately, by shifting here and there, you can induce beta equations for the roots of these polynomials. Very simple exercise. Shift by i over 2, by minus i over 2, divide one equation to another, take the root. And so that's how here, actually, the quantum integrability, the quantum integrability of spin chains appears. Of course, I have to motivate this, but there is a quite simple way to do it. OK, then I have to finish. Probably I will not go as far as to the, uh, to the supersymmetric case. Uh, but let me continue here. Uh, one important Uh, here I only, for the moment, solve it in terms of n functions. Say here I know how to solve it in terms of two functions. It's not yet done. Uh, just a second. I will uh, give you, in a second, I will give the result. <laughs> no, uh, for, for the moment it's clear what is the structure, yes? I will use it to solve the equation. It's not yet solved. Uh, before I only give an important relation, which is called Flucker's, uh, we call it QQ relation. Uh, all these multi-index Q functions are related by, suppose I call this function Q with big index, say, J. This is the multi-index J. Then the relation goes as follows. Q, J, if you multiply it by Q, J, and you add two indices, I and J, here, to this multi-index J. <laughs> so in, uh, then it appears to be Q, J, I, plus Q, J, J, J small, minus, minus, J i minus Q J J plus. So it's a simple determinant with shi with little shift, with a sort of generalization of this. Uh, so it's a nice relation which can be used uh, by, for example, it's clear that now all the multi-index functions can be using these relations expressed through one index function, but we already have this relation here multi-index functions are expressed through one index functions. And now I simply write for you the solution of Hirota equation here using this, using this form, QL. And the solution is, let me write it here. Uh, 
the solution is T A S equals Q A form shifted by S with respect to U wedge. This you you need two n functions actually here two n functions to describe the solution. Uh, it's minus s, and the form is, of course, n minus a. The function I call q bar. Similar set of functions, but named as q bar. So this solves Hirota equations in, in this strip, and in absolutely general way. And you see that it's a full form. A form multiplied by n minus A form, it's a full form, which is scalar, oh, again. That's the solution? Uh, that's the solution. But then if you want it to make more group theoretical, like you want to have T equals zero here to play with characters and not for this abstract case of principal chiral field, uh, then you simply impose the condition that Q bar is equal Q shifted by N units of I over two. So <coughs> this is enough to put it, to make it zero here. It's very easy to observe why it's the solution actually. For example, if you take A equals to zero, you'll have here some constant. Here you have, will have the form which depends only on U minus IS over two. It's sort of a left mover on the uh, chiral part, but anti-chiral is absent. Then, as you noticed, uh, that uh, so for this boundary, as you noticed, on, uh, only two terms are left, which is Laplacian, which gives this solution in terms of uh, one wave. And of course, this is only possible if there are three four, three terms in Hirota, but this times that is absent. That way. That's why this one is zero. So it's uh, very easy to motivate it. Um, okay, and uh, finally, the same the same thing can be applied to supergroups. And actually, the difference is essentially one can uh, introduce the Grassmannian, uh, mm, the graded. Uh, Q, uh, Q system, we call all this set of Qs as Q system. One can introduce the graded Q system in a very <laughs> trivial way, namely we introduce Q with two multi-indices. Here you have, for example, something like A1, etc., AK, A, a uh, small k, and here you have uh, J1, et cetera, Jm, a small m, some subset of indices. And by definition, it will be a very simple thing. Uh, it will be the same as we already introduced, these Q functions with only one set, but we do the following. I we leave as it is, and instead of J, we put a supplement of J. I mean, J belongs to, to the, I belongs to the subset uh, one, two, etc. K, which is the rank uh, of the group, for example. And J belongs to the subset one, two, etc. M, some subset of indices. Now, to introduce the super Q, you simply take i as it is, so this slash means this uh, 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 vertical slash means that it's already a super q. And here you put, ah, so how, how to denote it? Say bosonic and fermionic subset. Uh, so i belongs to, to b and j belongs to f. And so 
So you take i as it is, and j you take as a sub, uh, supplementary subset b uh, backslash, ah, sorry, f backslash j. This is the way to introduce, uh, as an example, so I have here some example to here, for example, uh, if you have Q one two slash um, and here you have two three for a uh, for four slash four for this kind of I mean k and m are four so this is by definition q defined on the previous blackboard but you you leave one two and these two indices two three you uh, you exchange uh, by by the how it's called supplement, which will be two three uh, instead of two three you put one four. Something is wrong. I know why. <laughs> they should be. So I should be have been more careful. Here you have to define k plus one k plus 2, et cetera, k plus m. You have to label all of them. Then 1, 2, and uh, 5, 7 is slash 5, 7 will be replaced by 1, 2, 6, 8. So fi instead of 5, 7, I took 6, 8 in the supplementary set. So this is this definition. It's sort of a Hodge dual by only these fermionic indices, but leaving bosonic intact. You could do the same with fermionic leaving, uh, with bosonic leaving fermionic intact. It will be uh, also good for the definition. And then these new functions uh, have very remarkable properties. They satisfy their own QQ relations, of course, which are simply a relabeling of those equations. And little by little, you can arrive at the solution of this general case. Even more general, you, have, you can have any, any uh, kind of um, uh, K1, K2, M here, non-compost case. So for this one, for example, it, will, it was this. And uh, uh, there will be a, a natural way to cut this guy in three parts. You solve each of these uh, parts of Hirota using this kind of formulas. But in, in terms of these, precisely these functions, they nicely fit together here. So it's a very compact and nice formula for the solution. And so here I have to finish. I wanted to explain you slightly more sophisticated things about how analytics in U in sigma models interplays with, so with these solutions of Hirota equation and how we can get the very interesting Riemann-Hilbert problems th th uh, as solutions of such sophisticated models as, uh, for example, n equals four super young males. Essentially, this is the beginning of <laughs> this solution. And, but I hope I will, uh, this is already a subject <laughs> of the new 